And right over here, clump of dandelion growing again. And over there, some garlic mustard. Now, essentially, what you got here is your own wild edible garden. And I could continue walking into the woods there, and it's just full of, uh, full of this stuff. So the question then arises, how do you harvest this? Well, if you're going to treat it like a garden, you want the stuff to grow back. So you don't want to be a hog. You don't want to pull everything up by its roots. Like this single plant here, you don't want to pull it up by its roots because if you do that, then the plant's dead. Now, obviously, the wild garlic here, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have to pull it up by its roots. But you see how there's a clump of it growing together? Don't pull all of them, just pull a few of them and leave one or two together. Maybe even space some apart. Treat it like a garden. And uh, this stuff will keep growing for you then. And instead of maybe picking this one here, by itself maybe pick a few leaves that you can see over there where they're growing together in clumps <laughs> job frank you can see here where they're growing in clumps come over and kind of thin these out some just like you would um, if uh, you know you're thinning out your garden or whatever the crops are growing close together like that and then you'll find that they'll grow even uh, bigger leaves and faster and things like that because they're not competing for the uh, water and nutrients and such. So we've identified violet, which I don't see them in, in the woods here, although you will find it. It was in the yard. We identified that. We got the dandelion. You can see it. Garlic and garlic mustard. You can just see just as I'm walking here, right across the apartment is how much of that's in here. There's other plants in here, but these are very easy to recognize. They don't have that any that I can think of. They don't have any poisonous lookalikes. A lot of people are disappointed. I've noticed whenever it comes to edible plants, a lot of times they want to learn some sort of exotic thing. And whenever you tell them stuff grown in the yard or right outside their uh, their apartment or their house, they get kind of disappointed because uh, a lot of times they spray this stuff or pull it as weeds. And uh, you know, this stuff you see every day, it's recognizable and it's easy to uh, easy to remember and then it'll stick with you. Like right in there, there's garlic mustard all through there. Growing all through there. You can just supplement your diet. You know, you don't have to eat it for every meal, depending on how much money you have, so forth. I mean, I would eat dandelion and plantain and stuff like that quite a bit whenever I was in college. Look right there. You got a patch of that all through there. And of course, Frank just pissed. So if you do harvest it by where you know people walk dogs, just wash it. Get some soap and water, clean it, soak it. You know, you want to take the extra precaution and cook it. You know, nothing wrong with that. They got a lot of recipes and books and things like that and all the nutritional facts, but every one of these is full of a lot of vitamins and uh, they're really good for you. The taste, Maybe not so much. Depends what you got a taste for. But, uh, you know, that's why they make salad dressing. So, that's not really an in-depth plan identification, so to speak. I mean, I'd recommend you buy some good field guides. And there's some good stuff on the internet. This is more just to show that, you know, you don't have to live out in the wilderness or on like a hundred acre homestead or anything like that to be able to go out and get these plants and things. So. If, uh, if this whole situation going on across the country right now is, you know, kind of got you scared, like what are you going to eat and so forth, just, you know, yeah, start studying them plants and just start paying attention then to the yard of, you know, at your house or your apartment or, or what have you. And, uh, you know, just learn three. Learn three plants that are very common. You know, we showed a few of them here because, I mean, just look at them all. Frank, he likes grass. He'll probably be... <laughs> He'll probably be throwing up here at some point, but uh, you know, even grass has a lot of minerals and stuff in it. But being we don't have four stomachs, you gotta chew it up, spit out the pulp. So, but we do have chickweed right here. So, and look at there, there's some more garlic, dandelion has a couple of different kind of shapes. Normally you see this one has a lot kind of 
arrow sharper points or whatever on its leaves and then this one's a bit more smooth so you see them growing beside each other so there's some variations so even right outside my door in the little flower bed there Now the preparation of the wild edibles and heck maybe you even try to learn medicinal plants too because a lot of those grow right out front of your door too. So a lot of times if uh, in order to prepare them for something other than just eating them raw really there's just very three very simple you know uh, items that you would need. You can fry things medicinal you can make tea out of them or you can steam them or boil them. That's it. It's easy. You want to eat them raw? Just eat them as is. Use salad dressing. You know, you name it. So there's a lot of recipes out there. And um, yeah, like I said, this isn't an in-depth guide. This is more just let you know what's out there and just start learning. If you're laid off, you got a lot of downtime right now. Like I said, just pick three. Pick three plants that are familiar. If you know everybody can identify the dandelion, so just study the dandelion, what its uh, vitamins and stuff that it has, and its medicinal qualities. Because pretty much the entire plant you can eat or make tea out of, make coffee out of the root, you name it. You can dry them, preserve them. I've canned different wild edibles before. Eh, you know, some of it tastes good, some of it doesn't. But it all depends on what your current situation is and whether you're doing it for health reasons or survival.